Hello and welcome to Otten Math. In this edition of Otten Math, we're going to talk about inverse and joint variation. We've already talked about direct variation in a prior section. Let's talk about inverse and joint variation. Let's go through some terms. All right, inverse variation. Variation. Now, I mentioned before that we have talked about direct variation. Let's review that briefly. Direct variation is when x and y vary directly. So the equation is going to look like y is equal to a times x. So an example might be y is equal to 3x. All right, we know that there is no constant here, plus 3. Otherwise, we're not going to have uh, a direct variation equation. So as a result, we also know that if we graph this in, in our mx plus b form, I could say that my y-intercept is going to be 0. So in direct variation, the graph is always going to go right through the origin. Right? So if you're given a graph that looks something like this, doesn't go through the origin, and you're asked um, if this particular graph represents direct variation, you're going to say no, because in a direct variation equation, uh, the graph of direct variation equation goes right through the origin. Okay, so just remember that this value needs to be 0 for direct variation. It's just y is equal to a times x. I've got y is equal to 3x. Okay, so let's take on another example. Just th things to remember. Um, if x and y vary directly when y is 6 and x is 2, find the constant of variation and write an equation that relates x and y. So generally what happens with students is uh, the common mistake is to say, okay, my direct variation equation is y is equal to a times 2, and that's it. But that's not a direct variation equation. All right, I have to rewrite this with y and x with a found value for a. All right, so I'm going to find out if y is equal to 6 and x is equal to 2, I'm going to find out, excuse me, x is equal to 2, I'm going to find out that my a value is going to be equal to 3. So then I just rewrite the equation as y is equal to 3x, and now I'm done. All right, it is not 6 is equal to a times 2. This is not a direct variation equation. This is a direct variation equation. All right, let's talk about inverse variation. Very similar to direct uh, variation, but in this case, x and y are now not varying directly. They're varying inversely. All right, so what does that mean? Well, it means that as y goes up, uh, in essence, x goes down, or vice versa. So y is equal to a over x, and a is still the constant of variation. So if y and x vary indirectly when y is equal to 8 and x is equal to 2, find the constant of variation and write an equation that relates x and y. So we're going to do the same thing that we did before with direct variation. We're going to find the a value first and then create an equation. However, in this case, it's not a times x, it's a, it's x divided by a, all right? So I'm going to write in my values for y. I have 8 is equal to a over 2. So I know that my a value is equal to 16. Now I'm going to rewrite the equation for inverse variation. And I just take out the a and I substitute it with 16. Okay, so the equation is not a is 8 is equal to a over 2. This is the method of figuring out what a is. The equation is y is equal to 16 over x. Okay, joint variation. Also very similar to inverse and direct. Joint variation occurs when a result varies directly as a product of two or more variables and the constant of variation. So before we had uh, direct variation with uh, y is equal to one variable times the constant of variation. So direct variation, so direct variation was equal to y is equal to a times x. Now we're going to add in another variable, let's just say it's z, into the mix, and that becomes joint variation. So terminology, let's just say if z varies directly with x and y, rewrite the equation as z is equal to the constant of variation uh, times x times y. So z is equal to the product of a, x, and y, again, where a is the constant of variation. So let's take an example. If z varies directly with x and y, so we're going to say z varies directly with x and y, uh, and we should say jointly, right? 
and z is equal to 24 when x is 2 and y is negative 6, find the constant of variation and write an equation relating x, y, and z. All right, so again, the first thing we need to do is find out what the value of a is. So we're given z is 24, that's equal to a times x, which is 2, times negative 6. And you see I have this all written out on the left-hand side, but I'm doing this for you by hand as well. I see that 24 is equal to a times negative 12, or I could figure out that a is equal to negative 2. All right, once I have the a value, I gotta put that, substitute that back in <clears throat> for a, and then I have my joint variation equation. z is equal to negative 2 x y. All right, it is not, it is not this equation. This is our means to get to the a value negative 2. All right, now we're going to combine direct inverse and joint variation. Writing equations relating variables may require that you combine direct inverse and joint variation, so let's learn how to do that. All right, so step one, identify the relationship of the given variables. So the example, z varies jointly with p and q and inversely with m. All right, so z varies jointly with p and q inversely with m. So there's my equation. I need to find the a value. So z is equal to a p q over m. Now I'm going to get some values and I'm going to figure out what a is and then I'll write my, uh, actually it's going to be a joint and an inverse variation equation. All right, so I'm going to use the given values of the variables to solve for a. For the example above, I have z is equal to 10. Then I have a, which I don't know, p is 5, q is 2, and m is going to be negative 2. So I find out that uh, a, uh, 10a is equal to negative 20. So a is equal to negative 2. Now I'm going to rewrite my equation that I figured out from the prior example. I'm going to substitute in negative 2 for a, and I have negative 2 pq over m. Negative 2 pq over m, and that is my result. That's the end of this section. Come on and join us for a couple of practice problems. It'll only take about 5 to 10 minutes, and you'll be good to go on inverse, direct, and joint variation.